On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the cross, the old rugged cross, till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the cross, the old rugged cross, and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. Good morning and welcome back. I, I, again, I can't tell you how happy I am that you've decided to be here for this worship service. Thank you very much for that decision. Thank you for always being here and, and watching these. And please, don't just take my word for what you hear. I'll scroll the scriptures up at the end of this and go out and read them. Read them for yourself because I want you to read your Bible. I want you to hear what God says. Thanks again for being here. We'll have our standard worship service this morning, but I do want to have a couple of call-outs to my brothers and sisters in Ghana. Thank you for coming and watching this. My brothers and sisters in, in New Mexico, in Los Alamos, in Colorado, in, in Texas in Alabama, Mississippi, here in Tennessee. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for being here. God bless you for worshiping your God on this His day. We'll have our same service this morning. We'll have a couple of songs of praise. We'll have a song to prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper. We'll have the Lord's Supper. Then we'll have another song of praise. Then we'll have a lesson, a closing prayer, and then a song of praise, and then I'll roll those scriptures up on the screen for you. This morning, before we start, let's go to our God in prayer. Father, this morning we come before you in thanksgiving and praise. We thank you for being our God, and we thank you for the rich blessings you've bestowed so richly upon us throughout our lives. We thank you, Father God, for your majestic oneness, for being our God. This morning, Father, we are going into a worship service of you, our God. It is our heart's felt desire that we bring glory to you and that we edify one another through this worship service. Please be with those, Father, who are sick or afflicted, who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Comfort them and heal them as it is your will. Be with this country. Be with our military. Be with all those in harm's way on this day and, and protect them, Father. Cover them with your mighty hand. We ask, Father, your forgiveness, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thanks so much for being here. We'll begin our worship service now. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Ye chosen seed of Israel's race, ye ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him saves you by his grace and crown him lord of all let every kindred every tribe on this terrestrial ball to him all man 
majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say say I can see. It's what the Lord has done in me. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. Into the river I will wade. There my sins are washed away. From the heavens mercy stream. Of the Savior's love for me. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. I will rise from the waters deep into the saving arms of God. I will sing salvation songs. Jesus Christ has set me free. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna. Jesus died and rose again. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. Give. I surrender, I surrender all. all. I surrender, I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. All to Jesus. Jesus, I surrender, humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender, I surrender all. I surrender, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me 
with thy love and power, let thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. I surrender all. all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. This morning, to prepare us for the Lord's Supper, I thought I would read to you out of the Gospel of Mark, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank from it, and he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Assuredly, I say to you, I will no longer drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. That was just before Jesus Christ was betrayed by Judas and taken captive by the very people that he came here to save. This morning we're about to partake of those same implements that Jesus set forth here in this gospel. The bread which represents his precious body and the fruit of the vine which represents his blood that was shed so freely for us. This morning we'll have a, we'll have a, a break, a pause. And I want you to remember that Jesus Christ died for us. That Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for us that we might have an escape from the snare of the devil, that we might have a way back to our God. He did this for us. Would you bow with me now as I ask a blessing for the bread and the fruit of the vine? Father, this morning we come before you in thanksgiving for this bread and thanksgiving for this fruit of the vine. We ask a blessing upon both, Father, as we partake of them and a blessing upon ourselves that you open our hearts and our minds to be reminiscent of what it took to save us from ourselves. Allow us to be reminiscent of that cruel cross that Jesus the Christ went to and allowed himself to be killed by the very people that he was here to save so that he could save them through his death. Keep us mindful of these things. And Father God, thank you so much for that great sacrifice. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou rushing wind that art so strong, ye clouds that sail in heaven alone, oh, praise Him, Alleluia. Thou rising morn in praise rejoice, ye lights of evening find a voice. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thou flowing water, 
pure and clear, make music for thy Lord to hear. Alleluia, alleluia. Thou far so masterful and bright, that givest man both warmth and light. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And all ye men of tender heart, forgiving others, take your part. Oh, sing ye, Alleluia. Ye who long pain and sorrow bear, praise God and on Him cast your care. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let all things their Creator and worship Him in humbleness. Oh, praise Him, Alleluia. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. This morning, I'm going to talk about something that you know, I don't, I don't think the world knows or even believes anymore. I trust that you do. Possibly you'll see where I'm going with this as I read it, read along. I, I heard a song here the other day that made me think about this. The name of that song was Everyone Talks to God. And we'll discuss that a little bit more after we have these readings. This morning we're going to start in the third chapter of Genesis. I'll begin at the eighth verse. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. And the Lord called Adam and said, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in a garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom you gave me, she gave me the tree and I of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is it you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Then over in the sixth chapter, I'll begin at verse 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that... Every intent of the thoughts of the heart of man was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air. For I am sorry I have made them. And then over in the... 18th chapter of the book of Genesis. I'll begin at the first verse. Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebrith trees of Marme as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I found Favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet. And rest yourselves under the tree, and I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts. After that you may pass by, inasmuch as you have 
come to your servant. They said, do as you have said. So Abraham hurried to the tent to Sarah and said, quickly make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. Then they said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? So he said, Here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah your wife shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I, after I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being so old also. And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Surely shall I bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh. Now, turn over just before the psalm, the book of Job. I'll begin there at the 38th verse, beginning at verse 1. Then the, the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this? who darkens counsel by words without knowledge. Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched a line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band? When I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors? When I said, This far you will come, but no further? And here your proud waves must stop. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked be shaken off of it? It takes on form like clay under a seal and stands out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and the upraised arm is broken. And then again in the same book, Job, over in the 40th chapter. I'll begin there in verse 6. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Now prepare yourself like a man, I will question you, and you shall answer me. Would you indeed annul my judgment? Would you condemn me that you may be justified? Have you an arm like God, or can you thunder with a voice like His? Then adorn yourself with majesty and splendor, and array yourself with glory and beauty. Despise the rage of your wrath, or disperse the rage of your wrath. Look on everyone who is proud and humble him. Look on everyone who is proud and bring him low. Tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, bind their faces in hidden darkness. Then I will also confess to you that your own right hand can save you. Then, in the Gospel of Matthew, I'll begin there in the 25th chapter. And you'll recognize this, I've read it before. At the 31st verse. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And He will set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right hand, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger, and take you in, or naked, and clothe you? When did we see you sick, or in prison, and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, 
Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will say also to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. They will also answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Then Paul's letter to Philippi And I'll begin there in the second chapter, the third verse and following. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in in lowliness of mind. Let each one esteem others better than himself. Let each one of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let his mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And finally, in John's book of Revelation, I'll begin chapter 20, and we will read beginning at the 11th verse. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Then the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. And death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And any one not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There were some scriptures there that I really would like you to go back and reread them, especially those where God and they they were God talking to men, God talking to human beings. In the instance of Adam, you know, why did you do that? And Adam was afraid of God, who had made him and who he had walked with. And suddenly he became afraid of God because of sin. Eve, the same thing. Then Abraham, talking to the Lord. How he humbled himself, knowing that that was God. And he spoke to God, and God spoke to him. And a little further on, Job. You see, if you read that whole book, which it takes a while to read all of Job, but Job was a good man. And it was allowed that Job be tested. Job had no idea why he was being tested or why things were going the way they were going. And Job Job said that. He said, why me? Why is this happening? And as far as I'm concerned, one of the most terrifying things that could happen is God answered him. And he said, who are you? Who are you to question me? 
You know, I, I know that we all do that. We all ask why. Would you really want God to answer? Would you really want God to say, who are you to question me? And then a couple more places. The final days, the judgment, when the sheep and the goats are split apart and judged. When all of humankind stands before their God and are judged. John tells us in Revelations that if your name's not in the book of life, you ain't going to make it. What made me think about these scriptures and what made me think about this was that song that I heard. It was a guy that was asking the blessing for his meal in a restaurant. And the fellow in the next booth said, you know, don't you watch TV? Don't you know that there's no such thing as God? And the old boy told him, he said, well, yeah, you can think whatever you want, but there is a God, and everybody talks to Him, eventually. That song reminded me of something that happened to me. I had a friend, some years ago, who was a staunch atheist. He said, I don't, I don't understand, there's no God, what, what's wrong with you? I even told him, when he was in the hospital, I'd pray for him. And he said, well, I appreciate that, but you know, thanks. And then I was asked to say a few words at his funeral, and I was told, don't invoke God. I couldn't. I, I invoked God. And that's just how I am. And after it was all over with, I sat down. My young son was there with me, and I said, you know, it's too bad. The art always said he didn't believe in God. And my young son showed his wisdom at that time when he looked at me and he said, Well, Dad, he believes in God now. And that's the point I'm trying to make with this, you know. Everybody, everyone that has ever lived, is going to talk to God. One way or another, you're going to talk to God. One way or another, you're going to have a conversation with God. Whether now and then, or whether just then. There's no getting around it. The question you have to ask yourself is, is your name written in that book of life? I am not anywhere near a righteous man. I, I'm not. I don't ever want you to think that while you watch these. I'm, I'm just a sinful, just, I, I have a temper. I do stupid things. I'm human. And I make mistakes. But I'm convinced my name is written in that book of life. I'm convinced of that because I'm told in the second chapter of Acts, that after what is arguably one of the greatest sermons ever preached by Peter, the people that heard that sermon were touched in their heart about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And they asked the question, what do we do? And the answer was repent and be baptized, every one of you calling on the name of Jesus Christ. And that's the answer. That's how to get your name in that book of life. Repent, that means stop going the direction you're going and turn around and go the other way. Say, yes, I am sinful. Yes, I need help. Believe with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and all that you are, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the one and only God, and that He died and was raised for you. And then, like as Christ was buried, you be buried. And as Christ raised, you be raised to walk in the newness of life. Romans chapter 6. That is the essence of what you need to do so that when you stand before your God, as Galatians 3, 
26 through 28 tells us to put on Christ. So that when God looks at you, He sees you through the perfection that is Jesus the Christ. This morning, I want you to know that there is a God. Everybody's going to talk to Him. If you're like me, you have to talk to Him all the time because my life depends on Him. I try to focus my life on Him. I try to depend on Him. If you don't have Him, you have to ask yourself this question. Do you want to go up in front of your God, as Job did, and have Him ask you, why didn't you? I asked you to, why didn't you? That would be a very bad time to try to come up with answers for why your, book, your name isn't in that book of life. Now, my phone number and my email address comes up at the beginning of each one of these. You contact me if you have questions, if you want to talk. And we will discuss whatever situation you'd like to talk. And we'll find a way to get you added into that book of life if you're not already. If you are and you feel maybe downtrodden or you or maybe you're not good enough, well, that's, that's being humble. Nobody's good enough. Romans chapter 3 tells us all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Nobody's good enough. God did this because He loved us so much, John chapter 3. Read the whole chapter. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this. I hope that you found solace in these readings. I hope that you'll go back and reread them and see what it's like to have God talk to you. Because reading His Word, God is talking to you. Before we close this morning, would you bow with me one final time? Father, this morning we thank You so very much for this opportunity to be here and to study Your Word. Thank You so much for being our God and being with us. We ask, Father, that You be with us throughout this week, that You cover us with Your mighty and protecting hand, that You allow us to be a bright and shining light in this dark and terrified world, that maybe someone will come and ask us why and we can spread your word to them. Forgive us, Father, of our sins. And again, thank you so very much for Jesus the Christ and for your word. It's in Jesus' blessed name that we pray. Amen. We'll have this one final song and that'll be it for our worship service. Thanks again so much for joining me this morning. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise. And press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith, Faith is the victory. Faith, Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. His banner over us is love, our sword, the word of God. We tread the road, the saints above, with shouts of triumph trod. By faith they, like a whirlwind's breath, swept on o'er every field. The faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield. Faith, faith is the victory. Faith, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. On every hand the foe we find drawn up in dread array. Let tents of ease be left behind and onward to the fray. Salvation's helmet on each head, with truth all gird about. The earth shall tremble neath our tread, 
and echo with our shout. Faith, faith is the victory. Faith, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him who overcomes the full white raiment shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame, will vanquish all the hosts of night. In Jesus' conquering name, faith, faith is the victory. Faith, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the blind say, I can see. It's what the Lord has done in me. Hosanna, Hosanna, to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. Into the river I will wade. There my sins are washed away. From the heavens mercy stream. Of the Savior's love for me. Hosanna, Hosanna. To the Lamb that was slain, oh.